so tell us a little bit about um, you know how you got the role and the audition process, of course. Yes. So um, I got the audition just like any other way. Um, you get the script sent to you and you audition for it, send in the tape. Um, and then the callback was when I knew that I really wanted to do this um, because I got to the callback and I got to meet Michael Felker, our director. Um, and he just immediately had the same idea of who Sydney was um, as I did. And he like allowed me to just use the space as my own. And as soon as I left that callback, typically leaving a callback, I'm like, all right, I'm going to let go of that. Like, I'm, I'm not going to stress about it. And for that one, I was walking to my car and I immediately called my fiance and I was like, fuck, I hope I get it. I hope I get that one. Oh my God, I can't stop thinking about it. Um, and luckily it worked out. So yeah. Uh, tell us about your character and uh, Sydney. So Sydney, um, I think she's an incredibly driven, motivated individual. Um, she has a daughter and I think I, I imagine, I don't have kids, but I imagine that having a child uh, really refills your life's purpose. Um, and I think she's found that in Steph, her daughter, and uh, she's not willing to back down in any way to make sure that her daughter is taken care of. And I, I really, I, that's my favorite thing about her. Uh, the, this film is pretty much a, a, a two-person film, uh, and you're working with, of course, Adam. Uh, tell us what that was like. Working with Adam? Yeah. Terrible. Um, I adore, I adore Adam. Um, I, he actually, I'm not convinced that we're not related uh, in some way. Um, I'm really hoping that we can keep in touch forever because he and I developed a relationship that really is like siblings. Um, we made fun of each other every single day and got on each other's nerves. But if anyone else tries to pick on him, I will kill them. Um, Joe is, uh, I think he carries the weight of the world on his shoulders. Um, I think that he carries a lot of responsibility for um, his sister and her well-being. Um, and I just think that he wants to make things right in the world um, at all costs, which turns out to be, you know, a, a fatal flaw. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's it's a. It, it, I just think that Joe is a very um, he's a caring brother who uh, hasn't always made the best decisions. Talk about the atmosphere and the the background that you had to work with in this film, and it, it made uh, the film that much more intense, of course. I mean, background for me, you know, a lot of times when I'm playing a character, I try and see how they're like me and how they're not like me. Um, and I think that I carry a lot of things that Joe also carries. Um, I also have a sibling who I'm very close with. Um, so <clears throat> being with Riley, it just kind of clicked in a way. Um, so, you know, I, I would love to say that it, it took so much work to get to these places and things like that. But I think the beauty of this film and the script is that so much of it came so naturally um, and we didn't have to push anything, you know. And you say yourself you don't watch scary movies or some genre movies. Can you tell us why? <laughs> Um, I'm I, I'm uh, a scaredy cat. I think um, I don't like when things jump out at me. Um, in the fight or flight, I'm fight, um, and uh, it's just not safe. I think to watch these movies. Um, I love being in them uh, because you know watching you know how the sausage is made is much better you know than watching it and and being like in a room and experiencing those feelings. But I like. I like um, forcing those feelings on other people, just not not on myself. <laughs> and, and talk about um, Michael's vision, of course, and being in this film. Well, I mean, M Michael's vision is the only reason this film worked as well as it did. I think that you know, having somebody as um, uh, as confident in the story as he is and was made Riley and I's job so much easier and we could go to him with any question because you know the storyline can be convoluted and um, you know lots of things happening all at the same time which it's built to be um, but the understanding for Riley and I to be able to go and ask him questions and to understand where we were and what was happening um, I mean there's he, he's incredible at that you know 
How's it feel to uh, to be here at South by Southwest? It's awesome. Uh, this is my uh, second time being here. Uh, it, it continues to get crazier in a way. Like it's just it just gets nuts. Um, but I love it here, man. There, th this festival is just it feels like my people in a way. You know, it's just people who are you know just this side of of ordinary. You know, where everybody's just kind of having a good time and just being truly themselves which is just you know it's so cool to walk around i'm a huge people watcher so i've truly enjoyed just walking around and taking it all in so tell us what inspired you to actually you're an editor first of course so mm -hmm. tell us when did you um when was the time when you said you know what i'm gonna make a film you know i've always wanted to be a filmmaker but i always loved the approach of editing in terms of learning how everything gets made you know as an editor you see where all the mistakes were where all the discoveries are and so when I edited a bunch of these movies, especially with uh, my collaborators, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, uh, I learned what the magic of movies can be and how you can actually practically do it on a small budget. So from there, I was just gaining confidence from every movie as an editor. And then I finally decided to take the leap. And uh, what were some of the things that you learned from um, both of those directors, of course? You know, that uh, anytime you do like a small film, you still can't forget like the scope and the intimacy that comes from just having good grounded characters. You know, all good sci-fi and good horror come from the fact that it's still everyday people that are, you know, dealing with everyday problems and the sci-fi and horror that in the wor world around them. Uh, informs all of their problems. So once, um, you know, when I was making Things Will Be Different, it all came from just the stuff that I learned and have been dealing with at the time as a human being. Do you think that's a template for most directors to be an editor first and then become a director? No, everybody comes from their craft that they lean towards more. I mean, you know, there's so many great directors that start off as production designers or cinematographers. But as an editor, I feel like, you know, that's where I could feel like where the movie is made. And so anytime I, you know, wanted to make something or when I started making this, I went back to all my editing techniques and skill sets going like, ah, this is how I can create a good moment or here's where I can give the actor a space to breathe and let them be themselves. Uh, so I feel like editing allows the most creativity, but it can come from anywhere, you know. And talk about this audition process and then you being part of it. And of course you had to pick two, two people that had was Pretty much a two, a two person yeah. film, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no, it was. Uh, you know, I I think two handers, especially when you're an indie film, allows you to have enough character growth without suffocating from an ensemble. So when we were doing the whole audition process, um, the first two people that I actually saw were Adam and Riley, and so they set the bar incredibly high. And even though we saw everybody, we couldn't forget them. Like Adam and Riley were immediately the first two to go. Not only as the talented individual actors, but as a pair to be believable and uh, loving brother and sister. And of course, um, how does it feel to be here at South by Southwest? And what what do you hope the audience will take with them when they watch this film here at South by Southwest? Of course, I mean it's crazy. I mean I've been to a lot of different festivals, but South by is like its own beast. It's huge and wonderful, but also you get to go around the corner and meet somebody that's an incredibly talented artist. So um, I hope anyone that watches this movie that they just go and get lost in the story. You know, it's a heady sci-fi thriller. You're going to come away with a lot of questions, but those questions should spur on conversation that come from a drink afterwards. And uh, hopefully there's enough of an entertaining ride that you have that provokes and pokes more questions when you watch it. Thank you so much for your time, Michael.